Hi and welcome back to Bell's Books. My name is Isabel and today I have a slightly different type of video for you guys. Usually I do book reviews but today I am going to be doing a study guide and this study guide is for A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller and it is aimed at GCSE level study although you could use it as a starting point for um, kind of A levels, IB, anything like that. So yeah, we're going to start with the basics. A View from the Bridge is a play. What does this mean for us? It means that when we write essays, we have to talk about it in terms of a play. So that means we have to talk about the audience, not the reader. We have to talk about the acts. We have to talk about the characters and we have to talk about how it's staged. We need to know about the stage directions and we need to be aware of the fact that it is going to be mostly dialogue. So those are all things that you need to consider if you're going to be writing an essay or doing a project on this book. So a little background about the history of the play itself. Arthur Miller, as I'm sure you know, was an American, and this play was first staged in 1955 as a one-act performance, but it was largely unpopular and unsuccessful, and then was revised to contain two acts, and was restaged and became much more successful um, in the London West End in 1956. So that's a really important date, 1956. So the play itself is set in the 1950s in America, specifically an Italian-American neighborhood near Brooklyn Bridge in New York. So for your essays, this would be an important thing to notice. You'd want to get that somewhere in your introduction, for example, just to kind of show that you've got a general understanding about the setting of the play. I'm going to be starting off by talking about characters. So I'm going to start with the narrator, Alfieri, I will put the spelling of his name here, um, is an Italian-American lawyer and he is the narrator, which means he speaks directly to the audience. He's at the beginning of the play and the end of the play. This is significant because it kind of he kind of frames the performance and offers insight to the audience that the audience might not otherwise have about the events and the people that are on stage. Um, then you've got the protagonist, Eddie. So Eddie is interesting because he has an improper love or obsession with his niece, Catherine. Then you've got Beatrice, who is Eddie's wife and who has raised Catherine herself because Catherine is an orphan. Catherine is Beatrice's niece. So you've got Eddie married to Beatrice and together they have raised Catherine because she has no parents. Eddie is obsessed with Catherine and Beatrice is of course married to Eddie. So then come in two more characters, Rodolfo and Marco. So these are two Italian cousins of Beatrice's. So Rodolfo is Catherine's love interest. He likes to sing jazz, dance, and so. He doesn't particularly like to work on the ships, but that's what he's doing here in America as an illegal immigrant because he wants to earn money. Marco is the older cousin of Beatrice's, and he has a family back in Italy, and he's extremely hardworking and works to send money back to them. So then you've got secondary characters. You've got Mike, who's a friend of Eddie's, Louis, who's a friend of Eddie's, Tony, he's a family friend, and he's the one who, important fact, takes Marco and Rodolfo to Beatrice's house when they arrive in America. Then you've got two immigration officers who arrest Marco and Rodolfo, You've got Mrs. and Mrs. Lapari, who are the upstairs neighbours, and they take in Marco and Rodolfo when um, the two are kicked out by Eddie. And then you've got two submarines, who are two other illegal immigrants who come into play kind of at the end. Okay, I'm now going to run you through a super quick plot summary, and this is really important in my opinion. I would recommend, as I go through this, either going through the play and kind of pointing out or noting to yourself where these events are, feel free to pause and unpause the video, um, or just really carefully listening to me, taking notes, maybe just writing key things down. Because in an essay, if you don't have a good understanding of how, kind of what comes before what and after what in the play, that'll become really obvious and it's a really easy way to lose a lot of marks because it shows that you don't properly understand the play. So act one, Alfieri is in his office, he's introducing the story. And then after this scene, you are introduced to Eddie, Catherine and Beatrice. And Eddie is shown as protective. He tells Catherine off for being near boys and he doesn't want her to get a job when she and Beatrice talk about that. Um, in the face of all this situation, Beatrice is very supportive of Catherine. During the dinner, you learn that Marco and Rodolfo are arriving later that night as illegal immigrants from Italy. Marco and Rodolfo arrive, you learn a lot about what they're like. They're both grateful for the hospitality and they're excited for the chance to earn money and pursue the American dream. 
the American dream is of course the idea that America is the land of gold, riches, it's going to make you successful, you're going to become a successful person in America. It's what people and immigrants came to America to do, to pursue their dreams basically. So Marco, the older cousin, wants to send money home to support his family, while Rodolfo, who has no family, wants to stay in the country for as long as possible. Rodolfo and Catherine begin to spend more and more time together. They um, get to know each other, basically, and kind of court and date each other. So there's an interaction between Eddie and Catherine, where Eddie is extremely overprotective and jealous and tells Catherine that Rodolfo only wants her for his money, for her money and for her citizenship, but Catherine just ignores this. Beatrice talks to Catherine about becoming a woman and tells her that she has to start making her own decisions. So there's a lot of tension at this point between the different characters, especially everyone seems to be against Eddie, which kind of fuels his anger and his desperation. Eddie, vil visit Eddie then visits Alfieri, the lawyer I mentioned earlier, and he asks if he can get rid of Rodolfo by law. Alfieri tells him that he can't and he must let go of Catherine. And it's true. While there is no law that says that an immigrant can't date and marry an American citizen, there is a law actually that says illegal immigrants are illegal. So it's interesting here to kind of note that disconnection. At the same time as this, Eddie's jealousy is increasing. And then there's a conversation between Eddie and Rodolfo where Rodolfo says, whether intentionally or accidentally, whether it's just kind of a slip of the tongue or he really means it, it's unclear, but he says that Catherine is easier than Italian girls, which enrages Eddie. And there is a pretend boxing match in the living room, which the girls are left to stop. So then we have act two. So at the beginning of act two, Alfieri is narrating and time has clearly passed. So you've got a scene where Rodolfo and Catherine are home alone and it is implied that they have sex. As they leave the bedroom, um, Eddie arrives home and he's drunk. Eddie kisses Catherine and then pins Rodolfo to the floor before kissing him too. Eddie visits Alfieri, who tells him to let Catherine go. Eddie then calls immigration and reports Marco and Rodolfo. Immigration comes, they arrest Marco and Rodolfo, and Marco, while being arrested, spits in Eddie's face, which is an important thing I will come back to later. Alfieri, however, intervenes. He pays their bail and arranges a marriage for Catherine and Rodolfo. So, final scene of the play. It's the wedding day and Marco returns to the house for revenge. Eddie tries to stab Marco, Marco stabs Eddie, and Eddie dies in Beatrice's arms. So there are a couple of things and I want you to think about. So there are two things I want you to consider about this ending. Without Eddie's death, would Catherine ever have been free of him and his possessive jealousy? And secondly, Alfieri managed to resolve the play. Catherine and Rodolfo can live happily ever after. Marco is free of jail and can continue for at least a short time to save money to his family before he will probably, inevitably, get deported. He has the desire to get revenge on Eddie and this desire is greater than his desire to forgive and move on and make the best of the bad situation. So what do you think Miller might be saying about people in general and the irrationality of humanity. So I'm going to go through some themes now and I'm going to talk about specific quotes because I firmly believe that if you don't have a quote to back something up you might as well not say it and in an essay especially if you want to get a top mark you need to know quotes. This is not to say that your essay needs you to be just kind of quoting the entire play. This is to say that for maybe every point you make you'll need a quote and so the best way I've found to learn quotes for an exam is to flashcard. So I would recommend making different colours um, of flashcards for different themes and ideas and kind of creating a quote bank for each theme and idea. So I'm going to give you like the main themes in my opinion of this um, play and then I'm going to give you some key quotations which are relevant but I would recommend that you go through the play and you find your own because active like active learning in that way is going to be what's most helpful to you during the exam. Okay, so the first theme I'm going to talk about is the fear of abandonment because it fuels Eddie throughout the play. So for example, in act one, Eddie says, and then you'll move away, that's life, and you'll come visit on Sundays, then once a month, then Christmas and New Year's, finally. So at this point, Eddie is talking to Catherine and he's demonstrating his fear of Catherine leaving him. And 
he's also guilt tripping her and this theme of guilt tripping continues throughout the novel and kind of demonstrates how desperate Eddie is in terms of how his fear of being abandoned but also reduces the audience's sympathy for his character. The next quote from this theme is a stage direction, Rodolfo, where the high tenor voice begins singing. Rodolfo, and this is the speech. I'll tell you boys, it's tough to be alone and it's tough to love a girl that's not your own. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own, a doll that other fellows cannot steal. And Rodolfo sings this song in earshot of Eddie, which enrages Eddie and kind of fuels his anger and really frustrates him but it's interesting to think about what the song is actually saying um, and why it angers Eddie so is it saying that Eddie loves Catherine perhaps it's tough to love a girl that's not your own and he just kind of wants to have her he has this possessiveness um, regarding her and he's afraid that she's gonna leave him I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own a doll that other fellows cannot steal um, Eddie's rage in reaction to this song demonstrates that he's afraid of being abandoned. He's afraid of another man stealing Catherine from him. The next quote I'm going to talk about is from Catherine, which is interesting because you might not think of Catherine having a fear of abandonment. It's obvious that El Eddie does, but perhaps not her. So Catherine says, I know him and now I'm supposed to turn around and make a stranger out of him. She's talking about Eddie because she is also extremely attached to him and she's afraid to abandon him, she's afraid to leave him because he's all she's known all her life. The next quote is also Catherine's. She says, Eddie, I'm not gonna be a baby anymore. And it takes Catherine ages to this point where she's ready to abandon Eddie, but perhaps it just means that she wasn't ready to leave before, even though she claimed to be. And finally, Catherine. I'm gonna get married, Eddie, so if you wanna come, the wedding will be on Saturday. She's abandoning him, but it's not a sign of independence or power. It's a sign that she's going to go and rely on a different man. But it's also a peace offering. She's kind of saying to Eddie, I'm leaving you, but we don't have to kind of separate completely. But Eddie rejects that offer and rejects that kind of branch that she's offering him. So the next theme I'm going to talk about is respect and reputation. So Eddie, the first quotation I'm going to talk about is Eddie's. I'm ashamed, paper doll they call him Blondie now. This is Eddie talking about Rodolfo and this is um, him listing things that Rodolfo is referred to at the shipyard where the men work. And he thinks that uh, Rodolfo is damaging his reputation because um, the other men think he's feminine and delicate and he thinks that that makes Eddie, and Eddie thinks that, that makes Eddie seem feminine and delicate by association. Um, so the next quote is, Katie, if you wasn't an orphan, wouldn't he ask your father's permission before he ran around with you like this? Eddie, despite what he says in other scenes, um, thinks of himself as Catherine's father, at least as a very strong father figure. And so the fact that Rodolfo doesn't see him as that for Catherine um, angers him and he wants the respect that comes with being a father, but Rodolfo refuses to give it to him. Eddie reiterates this later in the play. I want my respect in Act 2. And then Marco. Marco is... But other characters in the novel, other characters in the play also have moments where they demand respect and reputation. But more often than not, they're not given it to it. But more often than not, they're not given it. They have to kind of reach for it or grab for it. So for example, Marco, that one, referring to Eddie. He killed my children. That one stole the food from my children. So respect and reputation are something that other characters are also thinking about. For example, Marco. Marco is a strong male figure. Unlike Rodolfo, Marco isn't kind of a dancer. He doesn't like to sing. He is literally working on the shipyard. He's a family provider. He sends his paycheck back to his wife in Italy. And so Catherine says, everyone knows you, Marco, spit in his, Eddie's, face. That's enough, isn't it? But it wasn't enough for Marco. Marco wants to fight Eddie, he wants revenge because Eddie has ruined Marco's reputation by having him arrested. And although Marco has managed to spit in Eddie's face and kind of condemn him in front of a crowd of people, it's not good enough. Marco wants more, more, something more affirmative, more real. So the next theme I'm going to talk about is the theme of dreams. So Eddie says early in the play um, to Catherine, 
You'll never get nowhere unless you finish school. For Eddie, and for many, or for many Americans during this time, education equated to success. Education equated to the American dream. And Catherine wanting to quit education for a job, it is almost as though Eddie sees her as throwing her dream or his dream away. Next quote I'm going to talk about is Catherine. It ain't exactly a secretary. It's a stenographer first, but pretty soon you get to be the secretary. So Catherine has her own dream and she really wants to pursue that no matter how scary it might seem and no matter how much Eddie dissuades her, she kind of sticks by that. So Eddie says, I want you to be with a different kind of people. If you're gonna get out of here, then get out. Don't go practically in the same kind of neighborhood. So this kind of shows that Eddie really does want a better life for Catherine. He has dreams for her. And although it kind of turns out to be extremely misguided and he kind of hurts her, punishes her, that doesn't mean that he doesn't want the best for her. Rodolfo's dream is this. Me, I want to be an American and then I want, I want to back to Italy when I am rich and I will buy a motorcycle. This being Rodolfo's dream, it kind of makes you think, right? So it does make him sound like he's just in it for the citizenship, no matter what he says. It does make Catherine sound like a naive person because he doesn't mention wanting to find love, wanting to get married. He is citizenship and money oriented. And then Alfieri says this quite interesting quote, um, in, again in the first act, Eddie Carbone had never expected to have a destiny, which I think is quite sad. So next thing we're going to talk about is men and masculinity. Eddie says, if you came in the house and he didn't know who was singing, you wouldn't be looking for him, you'd be looking for her. So this is Eddie basically criticizing Rodolfo's masculinity. He's, he's emasculating him and he's kind of saying that um, he's not manly enough because of his singing voice. He's quite feminine. And he says again, he looked so sweet there, like an angel. You could kiss him, he was so sweet. Which is an attack from Eddie towards Rodolfo, but it also makes you kind of call Eddie's masculinity and maleness into question. You kind of think of him as like, you wonder about his sexuality a bit maybe. So there's a stage direction as well where Eddie pins Rodolfo's arms, laughing and suddenly kisses him, which which is interesting. So you might want to think about what that says about Eddie's masculinity and Eddie's, Eddie's sexuality. Um, the relationships between men in this play as well. The final quote I'm going to talk about right now for men and masculinity is, Mar is something said by Marco. Animal, you, Eddie, go on your knees to me. And this is Marco demanding that Eddie is submissive and Marco can beat him and kind of dominate him and he's emasculating Eddie in front of his community which he's taking away his manliness which is kind of all that Eddie is as a character aside from his obsession with Catherine which is quite sad if you think about it. So contrastingly I'm now going to talk about women and femininity in A View From The Bridge. So there's a lot of struggle between Eddie and Catherine. So Eddie really doesn't want Catherine to grow up. So for example, I guess I just never figure on one thing. Catherine, smiling. What, Eddie, that you would ever grow up? So Eddie didn't ever expect Catherine to grow up. He likes the idea of her, someone young, naive, and reliant on him. But of course she does grow up and that hurts Eddie. And she becomes a woman and he's just not ready for her to do that. So you might also want to think at like alongside Catherine's kind of becoming a woman is Beatrice. Beatrice feels extremely, um, isolated and although she's quite an underdeveloped character she struggles with um Catherine and Eddie's relationship she says to Eddie when am I going to be a wife again Eddie implying that she he isn't fulfilling her needs sexually and also implying that Eddie is so wrapped up in Catherine that he's not making time for Beatrice Beatrice then criticizes Catherine for this saying like when he comes home sometimes you throw himself yourself at him like when you was 12 years old implying that Catherine needs to have a certain level of dignity reminding the audience that Eddie isn't Catherine's father and so in their society at some point it becomes inappropriate for Catherine to act like this in front of Eddie and with Eddie. And then at the very end of the play when you really think that Rodolfo when you really think that Catherine's grown up and kind of become a woman because she's with Rodolfo and um, she's finding her womanhood. Rodolfo, I'm going to demonstrate this quote to kind of oppose this idea. 
Rodolfo, clasping her to him. Oh, my little girl, Catherine, teach me. I don't know anything. Teach me, Rodolfo. Holds me. Hold me. So this kind of, this quote demonstrates how Catherine desperately wants Rodolfo to um, support her like Eddie has. She wants to be a little girl. Maybe she's not ready to grow up. She quite enjoys being looked after by a man. She doesn't particularly have any, she doesn't really have any desire to move on in the way that she pretends that she does in public. So the final um, theme I'm going to talk about is desire and attraction. So at the very start of the novel, Eddie says, Katie, you are walking wavy. I don't like the looks they're giving you. The heads are turning like windmills. And this is kind of the first call to attention that Catherine is becoming a woman. And it's quite natural for um, Catherine to grow up, but Eddie hates this and kind of wants to restrict it. So there's a stage direction as well, where Catherine strikes a match and holds it to Eddie's cigar. And um, it's been suggested that this could be phallic imagery. Um, phallic meaning related to a penis and kind of um, almost an image of Catherine of Catherine and Eddie's more sexual relationship or what he wants to be there. And there is also the struggle of Beatrice, as I mentioned the quote before, when am I going to be a wife again, Eddie? She wants him to be attracted to her, she wants him to desire her, but he doesn't want that because he's so obsessed and desires Catherine instead. Alfieri mentions this as well. He says there's too much love for the niece, um, reiterating again the idea that um, Eddie has just gone too far. He's attracted to the wrong person and it is completely illicit, this kind of affair. There's also a stage direction. This is when Eddie comes home drunk and finds Rodolfo and Catherine. Stage direction. As Catherine strives to free herself, Eddie kisses her on the mouth. And then stage direction. Eddie pins Rodolfo's arms, laughing, and suddenly kisses him. Um, so this is interesting because it kind of it's kind of an expression of all the tension that Eddie has building up inside of him, the desire, and it's only when he's drunk can he really let that out and kind of get rid of it, which um, which is yeah, it's interesting to kind of see that kind of come to fruition. So I don't know, you might want to think about um, Eddie's sexuality. Um, the whether or not the people he is attracted to it is okay and you might want to think about the implications for Beatrice and how isolated she must feel. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here and this will just be the characters themes and plot summary video because I have more to talk about. I have a bunch of stuff to mention about A View from the Bridge as a Greek tragedy but I think it would be valuable to put that in a separate video um, so that this one isn't like 45 minutes long. Thank you so much for watching. This will be part one of two and I really hope you enjoyed this and it was clear to you and you can go away and you can find some more quotes. I would recommend making mind maps maybe. So each theme could have its own page and then on each mind map you could have as many quotes as you can find um, in like a brainstorm and you could then make those quotes into flashcards. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope that this has kind of cleared the play up for you or kind of helped you revise it. And please like, comment and subscribe for more.